Perhaps the most mind-blowing and disturbing thing about PFAS isn't what it is, where it's from, or how it impacts your health, though we'll get to those in a minute. Rather, it's how such incredibly small amounts of it can impact your health. It's almost impossible to comprehend, but we're going to use the sun to help us out. This is Bottle Pro, and I promote health through hydration by helping you find the best bottles and by learning about hydration in general. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Regulatory agencies limit concentrations of harmful contaminants in your drinking water. Three common ones you'll see are copper, lead, and more recently, PFAS. The US EPA limits copper at 1.3 parts per million. What this means is that if the copper concentration exceeds that limit, sometimes known as an action level, then the utility provider or the company or person causing the contamination has to take corrective actions, as well as notify the public of any potential health concerns. But 1. 0.3 parts per million is hard to visualize, so what does that look like? For comparison, let's look at the sun. Not literally, of course, but figuratively. The sun is on average 93 million miles away, and if you calculate that out, 1.3 millionth of the way to the sun is roughly 121 miles. That's almost halfway to the orbit of the International Space Station, so it's pretty far up there. Lead is even more dangerous at lower concentrations, so it has an action level of 150 parts per billion with a B. If you calculate that out, it comes to roughly 14 miles up, which is about twice as high as most commercial airplanes go. But some PFAS chemicals have an action level of four parts per trillion, and that's trillion with a T. By comparison, to go four trillionth of the way to the sun, you don't need a rocket or a plane, you just need a short ladder. That's right, I just went about 4 trillionth of the way to the sun because when you calculate it out, that's about 2 feet. This is an incomprehensibly small amount, which leads to the questions, what exactly are PFAS chemicals and how does something that small even affect your health? And more importantly, what can you do about it? So what is PFAS and where does it come from? To start, PFAS is not just one chemical. Rather, it refers to a group of thousands of similar ones. They've been used in manufacturing and industry since the 1940s in all kinds of things. But the most common ones you'll hear about are things like nonstick packaging and cookware, wrappers and takeout containers from some restaurants, stain-free clothing and carpets, and firefighting foam that was commonly used at facilities like military bases. Some of these, like nonstick cookware and stain-free clothing, are easier to avoid, and you're starting to see more and more products labeled as PFAS free. This seems to be leading up to a similar cultural and consumer shift, like what happened with the water bottle industry in the late 2000s with BPAs. But while you can avoid certain products easy enough, it's a whole different problem when you talk about manufacturing plants or bases where products were made using these chemicals or that type of firefighting foam was used. And while you may think the products in your home are a more immediate threat, that's not necessarily true and it depends on where you live. In many ways, these major contributors are a bigger long-term problem because years and years of usage and high exposure at places like manufacturing plants and military bases has led to high levels of PFAS chemicals seeping into the ground, contaminating the groundwater, which then gets into wells and public water supplies for communities both in the immediate area as well as downstream. And these chemicals take a long time to break down, so they don't really go away naturally, at least not in the short term. That's why a lot of times you hear them referred to as forever chemicals. They just continue building up in your body, animals, and the environment as more exposure happens over time. But what can something measured in parts per trillion really do to your health? While it's understandably difficult to believe, research is indicating that those kinds of small concentrations of PFAS chemicals have been linked to a wide range of health issues, including decreased fertility, development delays in children, increased risk of some cancers, interference with your body's natural hormones, reduced immune system effectiveness, and higher cholesterol. This is a developing set of knowledge on a topic that needs more research, but there have already been enough peer-reviewed scientific studies from reputable sources show a clear enough 
negative health impact to support proposing or enacting some pretty major regulations. And judging by Google Trends and these multi-billion dollar settlements with major contamination offenders, you're seeing a rise in PFAS awareness with the public, which is sure to lead to more changes from brands and manufacturers. So should you be worried? Well, to some degree, that depends on where you live. The Environmental Working Group has this interactive map that lets you look at sampling data at different points throughout the US. Darker blue is good, lighter blue is bad, purple is a military site, which oftentimes have the highest concentrations, and orange are other types of sites like manufacturing plants. Some areas that are closer to major contamination sources will often find higher PFAS concentrations, though it's not a given. Wilmington, North Carolina is frequently included in and lists of cities with the worst PFAS contamination issues. But the actual source of much of that contamination was roughly 70 miles away at this chemical plant near Fayetteville. Remember how PFAS gets into the groundwater? Well, even if chemicals aren't dumped directly into the river, they can still get into the groundwater, which then seeps into rivers over time, which then affects downstream communities like Wilmington. This is what led to the nearly $1.2 billion settlement in 2023 between these three companies and downstream water suppliers. I'll leave a link to this map in the description if you'd like to check it out for where you live, but long story short, if you want to avoid PFAS and have some flexibility on where you live, getting closer to the headwaters at higher elevations is probably a safer bet because last I checked, water doesn't flow uphill. Now most of us can't move to Aspen, and besides, the French are so what can we do? Consumernotice.org has this really helpful summary of PFAS, and it includes ways you can limit your exposure, mostly focusing on which products to avoid. But when it comes to your drinking water, that's a little trickier, but there are a few options. Quick disclaimer though, single PFAS test costs hundreds of dollars because it requires highly sensitive and technical analysis. I am a small YouTuber, so I don't have the kind of money to pay for tests like that. And on that note, give the channel some love if this video is helpful. But after researching this topic and reaching out to companies, here's what I've found. Not all filters will remove PFAS, so you need to be careful. This article posted on Duke University's website says one of the most reliable types of filter is under the sink reverse osmosis. I have this five stage system by APEC, and they're certainly not cheap, but it's not a huge investment either. It takes a little bit to install, so if you're not comfortable with doing that, then add the cost of a plumber. But once it's set up, you just change out the filters on a schedule. Some of them are every six to 12 months and others are every few years. If you have the budget, space, and technical ability to set this up, this kind of filter is probably your best option. Two-stage filters are also good and I'm assuming Duke's test referred to systems like this one by Aquasana, but the article also mentions how they didn't test too many of these, so they didn't seem as certain about it. Activated carbon filters are really popular and they remove 73% of PFAS contaminants, which is a lot better than nothing, but the results were inconsistent with different brands. The Environmental Working Group, which made that map I showed you before, also lists a few filters that they've tested that reduce PFAS completely or close to that. They show this one by Travel Berkey as a good high-end option, while these other pitcher filters are more affordable. Now on this channel, I mostly talk about water bottles and they have a place in this discussion too. Even if you have an under sink reverse osmosis system, that doesn't necessarily help you out when you're on the road, especially if you're flying somewhere and you can't take any water with you. So for traveling professionals and road warriors, having a bottle that can filter out PFAS on the go may be appealing. Brita is one of the best known water filtration companies and they have this bottle with a built-in straw filter. It uses activated carbon, so it potentially does help with PFAS, but I don't really know for sure. I reached out to them on their website a few days before posting this video, and at that point I hadn't heard back. But I'll update the description and add a comment below when they do, so check that out. This is a similar straw filter bottle by Simple Modern. They responded within a day of my message, and they mentioned how the filter removes chlorine and particulates up to about 15 to 30 microns in size, but they quote, don't have any other information regarding PFAS or 
or microplastics. So it was a helpful and quick response in many ways, but ultimately inconclusive for PFAS. Grail has their French press style filter, and from their website FAQ section, it uses activated carbon like Brita and Simple Modern, but it also uses non-woven ceramic fibers that have a high electropositive charge. They responded within a day of my inquiry and provided a cover letter from a test. I can't see the details like how much PFAS was filtered out, but it says on the cover letter that their ultra press bottle passed the test for two of the most common PFAS chemicals. And lastly, this bottle by Vital Loop has a built-in filter pump, so it's a little easier to use than straw filters that can be restrictive and Grail's design that you have to press down on. They sent me a testing report that shows an almost full reduction in PFAS. So that's the most complete information I have from any of these companies so far. Now some of these bottles have conclusive tests, others are easier to use, and some are a lot more affordable. It's definitely a developing mix of products, so take all of this information and decide what's best for you. But I'm just glad there are some viable options on the market today, and there will almost certainly be more coming. If you made it this far, consider using one of the links in the description if you're going to buy one of these bottles or systems anyways. It doesn't cost you any extra, and I may earn a small commission that really helps us out. Thanks again, and happy hydrating.